Hi, this is Mike Paulson. Welcome to another one of my video sermon PowerPoint presentations. As you know me, or as you can see here, I am teaching Paul's Greater Commission, as I call it, emphasizing the goodness of God during today's latter times of the dispensation of the grace of God as we approach the last days. Uh, rightly dividing the word of truth in the King James 1611 Bible, according to the Apostle Paul. These are always Bible sermon presentations of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, again from a King James 1611 Bible. This particular one is entitled, Will You Love His Appearing? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That's Paul speaking in Timothy. And he says, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4.8. So this is part one of a, of a little Bible quiz I'm putting together to help people become better aware of the scriptures so that you not only deeply appreciate the goodness of God, but that you also will truly love his appearing, not just your disappearing. As today's dispensation of the grace of God appears to be winding down and out, are you aware of how God will deal with people after the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, which many people today call this the rapture, when the dispensation of the grace of God is completely fulfilled, it's completed, it's done, it's ended, the goodness of God will be withdrawn. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, and them which felt severity, that's the Jews, that's the Old Testament, that'll be the tribulation, but toward thee, goodness, and he's speaking about the Gentiles, the Gentile nation, if thou continue in his goodness, which, by the way, is only taught by Paul and can only be found in a King James Bible. And if the Gentiles are done and do not want to continue in God's goodness, the goodness of God, thou shalt be cut off. And that's the nation of the Gentiles, the Gentile nation that will be cut off. That's the rapture. Now, we'll talk about that in a little bit more as we go here. And the fullness of the Gentiles will be come in. That means God is done with the Gentiles. And God will be done with the Gentiles when the Gentiles are done with the goodness of God. And that's when the nation will be cut off, goes on into the tribulation. So in other words, are you aware that Christ's appearing will not be for those who choose to see miracles, signs, and wonders? According to Mark chapter 16, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts chapter 1 through 8, and Hebrews through Jude, because they're just trying to strengthen their own faith, which is exactly what their pastors are teaching, what their books are, are writing about, and Bible studies and stuff, is to build up your own strength. And they're, they're going to find out that looking for miracles, signs, and wonders is not the plan during this dispensation. Christ will instead actually appear to those who are believing by faith, by faith in the risen Christ through faith in his inspired, preserved, and perfect written words, receiving his faith, thus living, as it says in Galatians, the life which I now live in the flesh, meaning we're alive on earth here, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to ask you some questions. Are you aware of such and such? And I'm going to, it's all blank. We're just going to go through the questions and then you can, you can stop. You can pause this thing and you can uh, jot down or look, are, are you aware of the scriptures that will support this question? As you will see. So here we go. Are you aware of the full testimony of Jesus Christ? Now the testimony of Jesus Christ isn't just during the gospels. The full testimony of Jesus Christ is pre-creation creation, the Old Testament, Gospels, pre-New Testament. If you don't know what that means, see, you're not, you're not quite aware. Uh, the New Testament itself, when does that begin? At the death of the testator. Uh, tribulation, his return, his second coming, and then eternity. That would be the full testimony of Jesus Christ. Are you aware of that? Well, let's go on here. The full testimony of Christ's greater commission to Paul. The Great Commission is in the Gospels. 
to the apostles. But Paul has a greater commission to the ends of the earth, Acts chapter 13. But I'm not going to give you the, I'm going to try not to give you the answer of scriptures now. We're just going to ask you, are you aware of, okay? Are you aware of what Christ himself went through for you? Are you aware of what Christ has done for you? Are you aware of what Christ has already done to you and it's already been done? Are you aware of those things? Are you aware of what Christ himself will be doing next? What's next on his calendar? And is, he, is it soon? Are you aware of your coming with him on his final return? That's my thought that looking at a couple of these verses that looks to me like we'll be coming back with him. Do you know where those are at? Are you aware? Are you aware of his fulfilling the law and what it means for you? Are you aware of what that all is talking about when Christ came to fulfill the law and that he fact that he died sinless, so he fulfilled the law? What does that mean for you? Are you aware of what comes next as our own lives seem to come to an end, either through death or the rapture, as people like to call it? Are you aware of which final judgment is yours, either as being quickened, saved, or are you religiously lost or unreligiously lost? It's either the judgment seat of Christ or the white throne. Do you know which one is yours? Which one are you headed towards? Are you aware of the details on which your judgment will be based? And are you aware of who your final judge will be? Is it a judgment to fear or is it a judgment to finish off what Christ has already done to us and for us? Are you aware of what Paul went through daily for Christ's testimony as well as for our benefit? Can you, can you name some things and find the scriptures for him that went that Paul's life, and I did a bunch of uh, series on, on Paul in the book of Acts, what his daily life was like, but he did those things to fulfill Christ's testimony and his commission, as well as for our benefit. Do you know what those things are? Are you aware of just how badly Paul wanted to leave and be with Christ? Are you aware of why Paul chose to stay to finish out his life and ministry here on earth? Are you aware of the details of what Paul's ministry consisted and actually still consists today? Are you aware of the scriptural truth that we are to follow Christ and follow Paul as he follows Christ? We're not to imitate them. All the modern Bibles say to imitate Paul, imitate Christ, imitate God, and even imitate the faith of your pastor. Is that can you imitate? You know, if you've heard the phrase, you need to become a Christian and and uh, do right and be like Christ, be Christ like, Christ minded. As, is that what we're supposed to be doing? We're just to follow Christ and follow Paul as he follows Christ. Okay, you know where that's at in the scriptures. Oh, I just want to give you the answers right now. Are you aware of which Christ is coming next? It's either the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 6, or in Revelation 19, the real Christ, the risen Christ, who is called faithful and true, and his name, the Word of God. Do you know the scriptures for those? Are you aware of the exact scriptures for your belief so you can enjoy the riches of the full assurance of understanding, as the King James Bible puts it? Are you aware of those scriptures? Are you aware of which gospel you are to be following today? Do you follow the gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Do you follow the apostles' doctrine? Do you follow Paul's gospel? Do you follow the everlasting gospel that's talked about in Revelation? Which gospel are you following today? Which gospel should you be following today? Better have some scriptures there, too. Are you aware of which gospel is falsely being preached today in just about every pulpit and church in the world? So those two questions are dealing with which gospel are you to be studying, learning, and uh, trying to follow. Which gospel will be required during the coming time of the Great Tribulation? So when this is all said and done, and you let's say that you missed 
what everybody likes to call the rapture, and you got the tribulation, the time of great tribulation, are you aware of what gospel you better start following? Is it going to be Paul's gospel? Well, think think twice before you start looking at that stuff. Anyway, these, these are just things to see if you're aware of, and you know the scriptures for them. Are you aware that the ver of the verses that show the words and working of Christ are now only through a King James 1611 Bible? There was a time Christ went directly to the people through the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14 hinted, but we don't follow that today. Where's the scripture that says that that big change took place, the big change from the words and working of Christ in our mind and in our lives are now found only through a King James Bible? Are you aware of rightly dividing the word of truth? Are you aware of it good enough so that you could actually sit down to somebody at a restaurant or whatever and sketch down a napkin for them so they can see what you're talking about? Because if you say rightly dividing the word of truth, they're going to have no idea what you're talking about. And if it's a Bible-believing guy, they're going to go by what some uh, artistic guru told them how things should be rightly divided. They pick and choose. Now we to rightly divide the word of truth by following Paul. Do you know where those verses are at? Are you aware of the verses that show you when you will depart if you are still alive? Do you know when you're going to go? Do you know when the rapture comes or the cutoff comes? The, when you meet Christ in the clouds and the, when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in? You know where that's at? These things will take place not at the end of the falling away. We've been falling away for a long time, and we've got more to fall. What's, what's the clue? What's the scripture that tells us when we will go meet Christ in the air? In the clouds in the air, of course. Okay. Are you aware of the verses that prove to us that we will not be here during the coming time of great tribulation? If you have your faith in the risen Christ, following him uh, by looking to Paul in the King James Bible, are you aware that says we will not be here for the time of great tribulation? A lot of pastors are teaching people to be prepared. You're going to go through a horrible time on earth. That's, that, that's the severity of God they're trying to teach, not the goodness of God. Goodness of God keeps us away from that hour of temptation, Revelation chapter 3. There's one clue. Anyway, let's keep going. I don't want to give them away. Are you aware of the famine of hearing the words of the Lord? Are you aware of it's already taking place in, in most cases, almost a complete famine? In the future, it will be a complete famine. Do you know the scriptures for that? Hint, hint, Amos chapter 8. Anyway, are you aware of where the Jews fit in history in the past and in the present and in the future? Are you aware of what Jews are involved? Who are the different Jews? There's different sects of Jews out there. The Bible even talks about uh, the Jews, the, those that say they are Jews, but are not. So are you aware of how the Jews fit in all this? And according to Romans chapter 11, there's a clue. Uh, if you're not aware of that, then you're going to be a conceited, arrogant, false, not saved Christian, by the way. Where does it say that? Where do you get that stuff? Are you aware of what your present lifetime, as well as your eternal future, will be for you? Based on scriptures, of course. Or are you just aware of yourself only? Because you just want to selfishly disappear from your challenging life. You're not, more, you're not interested in his appearing. You're interested in your disappearing. Couple of bonus comments here. Bonus number one. Are you aware that knowing that God didn't choose us, but instead he actually used us? You ever heard of that? We know we aren't the chosen. The Jews are the chosen. But what about us? Did he choose us? No, he didn't choose us. He went to us like he always said he would, but he, he was going to go to us through the Jews. But, but really, when you look at it closely, God's actually used us. What do you mean? Well, first, read the Old Testament, if you haven't already, and remember what the uncircumcised Gentile heathen, by the way, that was us, in the Old Testament did to God's people. And yet, look at what God eventually did to and for the uncircumcised Gentile heathen. It's amazing. By the way, that is taught only by Paul. Why? Well, read Romans chapter 9 through 11. We need to remember it is always about his people, the Jews. He used us 
to reach out to his people. Romans chapter 11 says, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? And Paul says, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So if if the Jews could see what Christ did for the uncircumcised heathen Gentile, maybe they would finally realize, well, that's the real son of God, and they would want what Christ has done during this dispensation. So Christ is actually using us to reach out to his people one more time. Remember, God's own chosen circumcised people, the Jews, always had to see signs to believe. And when they still didn't believe, God often responded with his wrath. And that wrath is called the severity of God. And yes, for God so loved the world, we know those verses, but the Jews were the ones who were supposed to take their Messiah to the world, not crucify him. So Christ had to go to us Gentiles by choosing Paul, And yet, as we see above, his first priority was always and still to the Jews. That's what the tribulation is all about, also called Jacob's trouble. But if the heathen uncircumcised Gentile believed by faith in Christ himself, by believing the words of the risen Christ, at first hearing from Christ directly through the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14, but then eventually becoming inspired, preserved, and perfect written scriptures only in a King James Bible. Oh, there's the answer to one of your questions right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So if an uncircumcised heathen Gentile believes by faith in the risen Christ, we are rewarded with the faith of Jesus Christ and are given the riches of the full assurance of understanding, knowing we can, through that Bible, learn to understand all things. And it is all because of the goodness of God found only during this dispensation of the grace of God and found only in the King James Bible and taught only by Paul. And yet, even still today, if any heathen Gentiles don't believe, at first they are still sharing in the forbearance, the long suffering, and the goodness of God. But if they die, they will die without believing. Bonus number two, are you aware of what the famine of hearing the words of the Lord means today as well as tomorrow? While most of us are already aware that the King James Bible is going to go into a famine status during the time of the Great Tribulation, Amos chapter 8, here's another answer for you, Amos chapter 8, 11 to 13. We are also recognizing more and more that a King James Bible is becoming much more difficult to locate to have for your own study and for your own reading. We are even seeing it actually becoming increasingly illegal and officially forbidden. We are even now experiencing an early famine of hearing the words of the Lord, as it is rare to find pastors who preach and teach the inspiration, preservation, perfectness, however you want to call it, meaning complete, finished of the King James Bible, as the only words and only word of God teaching anyone that they can already stand or prove unto God now. It's a marvelous Bible, but the pastors don't preach and teach it. So we're already experiencing the famine of the hearing of the words of the Lord in the pulpits today as well. And adding even more to the early famine today, it is extremely rare to hear the very words of the Lord from a pastor who rightly divides through Paul only, who does not teach the Old Testament Gospels to anyone. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Everybody teaches out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, that's where Jesus' life is. Well, it is. That's where he was before he died on the cross. So the New Testament doesn't begin until the death of the testator. Do you know where that's found? And so these pastors are already putting forth the famine of hearing the words of the Lord. So rightly divides through Paul, they're not doing that. They're not teaching the right gospel of Paul. And they're designing their local assembly on the teachings of the apostolic doctrine and their early church, Acts chapter 2. Instead 
of basing the local church, their local assembly, on Paul's teachings in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5. It's amazing stuff. Conclusion. Here we go. So are you more aware now of how close we must be to the end of the dispensation of the grace of God and everyone going back to the severity of God? Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And that's the Gentiles, that's directed to. And in Thessalonians, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. When the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, we go with the Holy Spirit because we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And so when he be taken out of the way, we will be taken out of the way. And that is when the tribulation begins. So can you now love his appearing more than your disappearing? There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, says Paul, unto all them that love his appearing also, see? So it's not just us disappearing. It's about his appearing. We should be looking forward to that. Because of the goodness of God, that's taught only by Paul and found only in a King James 1611 Bible, I sincerely hope that this video presentation, Bible study, quiz, this little quiz for you, has brought you to a new level of biblical scriptural awareness and understanding. Or maybe you just need to receive that new beginning with a soul-saving quickening in your life. Not being born again, that is not a scriptural truth. Born again is referred to the Jews as a nation. It has nothing to do with the Gentiles, it has nothing to do with being saved. I should have put that in my quiz, I guess, for you to, to prove that to you. But if you need that soul-saving quickening in your life, based on what you have just learned from the risen Christ through Paul, as found only in the King James 1611 Bible. Remember, it is not the severity of God that will lead anyone to repentance today. It is the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. It is a joyful repentance with the riches of the full assurance of understanding and the peace of God that passeth all understanding. However, during the coming time of great tribulation, this marvelous goodness of God will no longer be available and the severity of God will be how God deals with people. And I personally do believe that this time of great tribulation appears to be coming very soon. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And that's in Matthew because it's directed to the Jews. Alas, be comforted. The goodness of God is still in place for us and to us as Gentiles during this dispensation of the grace of God. It's still there. But you must be quickened, saved, and not born again to receive the goodness of God.